Coors Light advertising highlights the quality of the beer as the most refreshing place on earth. Additionally, Coors Light ads are designed to target young demographics. The stories behind the ads seek to capture the attention of young people, situating them in cool places they would like to be. Well, I'll tell you what, young people, one place you don't want to be is out in public spreading COVID-19. Because while there's a common misperception that only the old and frail can contract the coronavirus, early testing data in New York City shows that even the young people are vulnerable. In fact, people ranging in ages from 18 to 44 have accounted for 46% of positive tests. Let that sink in. Don't let the germs sink in. Wash your hands. This is a remote cold cans because Joey and I can't see each other. We can't touch. Build the Every remote. Time we touch. <laughs> we spread that feeling of Corona. All right. Today on the podcast, we are giving a new opportunity for the first time in, in ever time. Opportunity. It's opportunity. It's Coors Light. Cheers, Joe. Cheers. That was a good intro. Uh, I'm not sure the message you were spreading, just social isolation, is a good positive message to spread to Cold Pants Nation. That's the only thing we should be spreading. Yes. To avoid the virus spread. doesn't spread. You spread the virus. Can I get a clap? Thank clap you. for that. Um, <laughs> so Yeah, so we're trying out a new remote show. Yes. The Prairie uh, Home Remote Show. How do, how do you how do you how do you feel about it so far? A few seconds in, it's a little weird. We just we do have video up, so we can at least see each other. I think it would be truly strange and difficult without video. Yes. Um, but we're giving it a try. We may have to do this for the foreseeable future, based on the guidelines and statutes and such. Our governor here in Washington yesterday just gave a um, shelter in place order, shelter which means place shout out. Shelter in place, shout out, shout out to shelter in place. Ooh. Basically means you can't leave the house except for essential things. Yeah. Now we could have a discussion about whether recording the Cold Cans podcast is considered an essential activity. Sure. And we could we also should have a discussion about the very real fact that he listed breweries as essential places of business. So breweries can stay open. I know. Um, what do you what do you think that is? Is it because People think, need some drugs yes. to get through. Yeah, I think I think he's basically saying essential is groceries and things to keep you sane. Yeah. It's strange that he listed breweries, but I think he's also looking at like the takeout model is mm-hmm. relatively safe. You, you have very limited contact. You like touching is, right? touching in a sanitized can. Of- yeah, in the spirit of just like people staying in, though, it's not a great yeah. thing. If people are going to get carry out beer every day. But our people, friends, our friends over at Optimism, I think, are closing. Today's their last day. Yeah, nine which, p.m. today. Right, which is unfortunate because they have to um, furlough or whatever they would call it, lay some people off. Yeah, um, but I think it's probably a responsible decision. Yeah, I I think it's an interesting balance we've had to strike the last few weeks between being responsible enough to socially isolate ourselves. And in Seattle, we've been doing this longer than most people. I think uh, listeners like in Wisconsin, for instance, are just entering this, the state we were in about three weeks ago. Um, So we've tried to balance like respecting the social isolation with the uh need to support small businesses especially these ones that we love and we hope are able to rebound in the summer or whenever we come out of this i've bought more takeout food in the past two weeks than i had prior year probably yeah and i i i think you were being i've tried to think about this myself as well like i think we're being pretty reasonable anytime before we were ordered to stay away from each other when we were together we were also like we're constantly washing our hands we brought disinfectant wipes like we weren't being irresponsible but then we were like okay well we can go out let's try to balance this uh yeah supporting businesses we love like you and i went to optimism like we just talked about we bought some merch we bought a bunch of cans to bring home Devin and i um drove we had to be in the ballard area for a little while this last weekend so we drove through we stopped at rubens uh populux and stoop 
Nice. Uh, three of our favorite breweries in in Ballard, and we just grabbed and go stuff there, and then went home. Um, but it feels it, yeah. That's a strange balance because technically we're not we shouldn't be out there doing that. And there were people out at those breweries doing what we were doing, like grabbing stuff and then getting in their cars. Okay. Uh, but we were just trying to keep these places. Well, what do you mean home. technically you shouldn't be doing that? I think that's well, something we're supposed you to stay at home, be, right? Right. But I'm like, based on what you said of what the governor said, that is something that is allowed along mm-hmm. with getting outside to exercise, going for walks or runs or hikes by yourself, basically, or maintaining six feet of distance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some of it does seem arbitrary, like, yeah, breweries ability to stay open. But I yeah. think it's along the same lines as, yeah, grocery stores are considered something that people need to survive. Um, the difference is grocery stores sell sustenance to stay alive. Uh, breweries sell beer. <laughs> hey, we all know what delirium tremens is, my friend. That's true. That's true. Some of us do need to be back at breweries every day. Speaking uh, of which, I have almost every night for the past two weeks gotten a Snapchat from old Joe Glock drinking a brew dog. What's it been your quarantine drinking routine? Oh, that's a good question. Um, Thanks, I do Joey. find myself dipping into the beer reserves certainly more than I, when I wasn't quarantined, but it's not really keeping 700,000 masks on hand. You have like a basement full of kegs. Yeah. And masks. Uh, (laughs) No, but we, uh, um, I don't know. It's just, it's out of like, there's not much to do. Like we, I will, I was talking about with you about this before the call. Like I felt very listless today and I felt like this on and off throughout like, I'll spend all day sort of working what I do. I'm fortunate enough to have maintained my job and I'm I'm happy about that. But I've also spent the day sort of doing enough. Like I I do as much work as I can and there's still a lot of the day left. So Mm -hmm. I'll work out. I will try to do something creative. And then we just kind of run out of shit to do, my wife and I. And so it's, it's been tempting to just be like, let's crack a beer before we whatever, watch a movie or whatever we're going to do because we, all of our options are off the table. So I've been trying to be careful. You know, I don't want to be, you know, pushing the limits too hard. So I'll, I'll, I'll usually have just like one or two and yeah. then go to bed. And so what I've been trying to, to drink is more local beers, especially in this time. Um, not uh, the yeah, beer that we're having on the show today. Hey. Uh, Coors Light. So uh, yeah, if, if places from Ballard, the Optimism uh, brews that we picked up the other day. We were, my wife and I were having those, those were delicious. Um, you know, but it is strange because part of the, the, the magic of, of beer is the social element and the idea of meeting with your friends in some place and then having this beverage. That's the end result of, of what you're doing. And that's not happening anymore. In home beer, uh, in home beer drinking is, is, still strange to me like i i do it but now it's the only choice that i have and mm-hmm. i don't know i'm getting used to this like everyone else how about you what are your drinking habits in quarantine? this has been the most fun beer i've had i think in quarantine um yeah. I, I have not turned that much to alcohol thankfully i've um been really busy with work which is kind of a blessing in like these first two weeks i think that will dry up quickly uh yeah as we've seen already. By the way, breaking news, the Packers are signing Devin Funches. I saw funny. that for our call. Uh, so not that breaking, is it now? I guess not. I just saw Tom Silverstein tweet about it while you were doing your monologue. Sorry about that. You asked um, me a question. I thought I'd give a, a thoughtful <laughs> fucking answer. Thank you for taking your time. Uh, Devin Funches, um, big, body, big body that Rodgers could trust through the middle. That'd be nice. Yeah. That's Geronimo. For sure. And he's going to be what Jimmy Graham couldn't, right? Yeah, well, we'll see. Funches also has a history of drops his whole career. Yeah, so. he's getting pretty old too. Believe. So he might lose trust early with Rogers. But uh, what the fuck are we talk? What do you? So you're not what drinking? I, drink? I haven't. I haven't been drinking that much. No. Every now and again, I'll just drink. I have a bunch of random beers out on my porch. I think a lot of them are still from my uh, Super Bowl party. So sure, just that been, could be the reason why we're having Coors Light right now, is it? <laughs> you actually left these over here this past time you were oh, here. Oh, okay. I had them. But yeah, it happened to be a beer we both had on hand. Mm-hmm. And now it's a new opportunity. Let's check in on the beer. How is it going down for you, Joe? I, you know, this is, 
I think I said this when we did this originally, and I don't remember what the exact date was. I, hold on, I have it up. I have Ooh, it white. up. October 20th, 2017. Wow. Feeling blue? Drink a Coors. That's what we talked about. And our tags are Coors, Twins, Twins, Football, and Blue Mountains. Hey, simpler times, Nick. I was simpler listening times. to it before we did this, and yeah, we open it by playing the uh, I love quarterbacks <laughs> in dirt. That song from a Coors Light yeah. commercial. That appeals to young kids, as we heard in the cold open. Yeah, well, uh, but young, yeah, kids, maybe, I guess. <laughs> young people, <laughs> you're losing it too in the quarantine. I am certainly losing it. Talking, talking, young kids. Um, I. This is one of the few beers. Now we have maintained our integrity throughout the duration of this show, and every time we've done an episode, we have drank the beer during the episode. We've never lied about it. We've yeah, I don't think we have. No, so that's good. This would be the one time I could probably get away with doing that because of how familiar Coors Light is. So it's going down as it normally goes down, which is fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tastes it's, like it's been refrigerated and let get uh, or gotten warm like five different times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's it's perfect for like either when beer isn't the thing that your your destination is. It's just like let's have a couple of beers while we sit and talk. Um, it's good for that. It's good for uh, like cookouts because you can you, you can kind of distribute it in mm. a cooler. Uh, you reach down, you get the fun. See now, if you notice my uh, my mountain is not blue, They're no longer blue. So this one is is already warming up. But that's part of it. Just having a nice cold, classic cold beer. These are great. They're my favorite light beer on the market. Yeah. For- I agree. They're good. I would be curious to see what we said in the first one because it's rated at 77, uh, which is pretty low in terms of even the light beers. Um, But yeah, I like this. It's a go-to kind of easy drinker. Like you said, I have a lot of, like I know my cousins and family who live down in Florida drink a ton of Coors Light as their Mm -hmm. beer of choice. Um, And and then I have some friends in Colorado who drink it. So I think it is fairly widespread in terms of its... People who consume it. Oh, yeah. Everybody likes Coors Light. Right. Whereas like Miller Light, you would think is a little bit more Midwest or something. Yeah. I I think that it's uh, it was plagued by the fact that we did it in 2017. And then it sort of mm-hmm. was at the mercy of, of the rest of our beers that got interjected into the ranking. So this is the perfect first candidate for new opportunity. Um and, you know, I don't want to jump to the rankings early, but this thing is too up. low. Let's wrap this thing up. This thing is too low. 77 is way too low, so it's going to go up my rankings for sure. Okay. Uh, I was, you didn't get the opportunity bit I was doing. One thing I picked up working from home is I am sitting on a stability ball. Now, if we Joe release, so ripped. release, if we the, release the video elements of this podcast, you'll see that I'm hopping – for the new opportunity. Huh? That's pretty good. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. I'm looking, I'm searching. We, I don't even have anything to talk about with you. Usually no, when we, good. when we sit down, we can riff usually because we'll be like, Hey, we we're in the grocery store and this guy was being loud. Mm-hmm. Well, of course the traveling elites was, is two thirds <laughs> of our show to this point. And that's well, completely we can, dried up. We can talk about, yeah. Travel is kind of off the table for a while. I have a couple of weddings this summer that I'm supposed to go back to Wisconsin for. Yeah. I have flights for them, but I don't know if those are going to follow through. Yeah. Um, what has life been like? So you've been still going out to grocery stores, I'm assuming. Yeah. I, so, I mean, literally like, so we saw each other last weekend. We were responsible and we mm-hmm. were still allowed to do it. We were washing our hands and stuff. But I think as of last night, so we're recording this on March 24th, as of last night, we can no longer even do that or are not supposed to be even doing that. And I think it's going to start going downhill for me because I, I I didn't know how much of an extrovert I was until this started. I always thought I was a kind of a balance because I, I really do need time to like read a book or play an instrument or like whatever the fuck I'm doing, like play a video game or something where I can completely like recharge my, my tanks. But I, I need to uh, to expend that energy. I'm like a I'm like a 
a, a collie or a lab that doesn't go to the mm-hmm. dog park anymore. Like I need to go to empty and then refill by myself. I used to think that meant I was an introvert because I need to refill by myself, but it, no, I, I need to refill. I, I, now I'm just always just, I'm pent up, Nick. I'm an incel. I'm an incel. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of always have been, and uh, <laughs> just exacerbating it. No, yeah, I get that from you because I, I, when we would cor- record in the studio, even it would usually be like we hadn't seen each other for a few days, so you'd come in spitting hot takes right off the bat before the mics are even hot. Of course, lots um, of fun. So I, I get that, yeah, and I miss doing that too with buddies. Like I was supposed to hang out with our mutual friend and engineer Matt, who is uh, leaving town soon, and now we, you know in theory, can't even see each other before he moves away forever. Well, well, to, to our point about travel, to our point about travel, that's going to impact him, right? Like, so his plan. Sure. I was hoping he was going to come on the show today so we could talk about that. I think uh, it's, you know, it's kind of a big deal. They were going to, he and his wife were going to hike California portion of the PCT and th- all those permits were canceled. And then they were also thinking about traveling in Asia and Europe later in the summer into the fall and that's you know sort of up in the air at this point much like the, by being the movie. Movie. yes um uh, we couldn't let that one go <laughs> yeah it's it's tough for everybody there you know there's so many situations like that of people having to cancel trips and yep um it's just a, a tough unprecedented time we're living in in our lifetimes obviously unprecedented wow. one thing it might be unprecedented in in any lifetime. This specific global yeah. pandemic, uh, in with with t- the technology that we have, is yeah. unprecedented. I was uh, going to bring that up, which also it's a weird balance, right? Because now is probably the best time in history to be stuck inside your house. Yeah, you have access to all the world's knowledge, all the world's entertainment, everything. Well, I don't know. There's a flip side to that, but go ahead. Fin- well, yeah, that's what yeah, yeah. There's the, also the- drive you nuts and that is not a substitute for human interaction right and at least we're proving that out where uh that was something we would just talk about in the hypothetical before was like technology and cell phones is destroying us like we still need this human interaction now we know we do i think on top of that though technology has has completely frayed our attention spans and when you have no attention span isolation is uh difficult because mm-hmm. you, you bounce from, I find myself bouncing from like when I'm not working, when I'm like wrapping up the day, I'm bouncing from um, like, I'll play, I'll read a book for like 10 minutes and I'll be like, I can't read this anymore. And then I'll go back to, the, I'll go back to like the movie I'm watching. I'll watch 10 minutes of that. And then I will, I'll like play a video game for 10 minutes and it's only been a half an hour and I'm fucking losing my mind. Like, <laughs> Because my shitty brain, my rotten, mushy brain has no yeah. attention span left to just sit and enjoy myself. So I wonder if part of like what we're dealing with is we're paying the price of that. Uh, mm-hmm. We're not able to scratch the itch that we've uh, created for ourselves. My metaphor fell apart. but uh, They always uh, do. I, I was going to say, um, we were talking about this before the show, kind of, where I've been working from home for almost five I guess over five years now, no, almost yeah. five years and dealt with a lot of these types of feelings for the first like two or three years of like isolation. And you just kind of lose your mind. Like you were saying, you run out of things to do to a certain extent, um, but you still feel like you're supposed to be working or, you know, being diligent about some things or being available. And it just really gets to you because I think it encourages a short attention span because when you're sitting at home, you're like, oh, I could take care of the laundry while this I'm on this call where I'm not talking or whatever, or I can go take the dog out quick between meetings. So you're trying to fit in a million different things and you are getting stuff done, but it just, like you said, kind of fries your mind a little bit. So it's interesting to me to see everyone, like a lot of my friends and family go through that um, on a mass scale rather than me just you know, sort of doing it alone. And uh, back then, I, I'll admit, turned to uh, the whole drinky drink a little bit. Sure. That's a way to pass some time. Of course, once it turned five o'clock only. Of course. Five o'clock um, a.m. <laughs> Joel. <laughs> we can still have fun. 
<laughs> my uh, my roommate Eric is on a work happy hour call right now. They have like a oh. bunch of people on a call, and they're calling it a happy hour. They each it's kind of cool. They each got like a twenty dollars stipend to get something for themselves for this happy hour. Like beer or like a drink? In theory, I think it was meant to be more like delivery food or something like Uber Eats something to your house. Oh, okay. Um, and then of course, at the end of the call, they will all be fired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope that's not true. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to deal with that if Eric comes out of the, walking out of the door and and doesn't have a job anymore. Just complete, yeah. He'll walk out of the door completely naked. <laughs> He'll have no hair on his body anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll have shaved off every hair uh, from every follicle on his body. What do you think about that, by the way? This is something. Now, part alopecia. of your identity. What? No, not alopecia. Come on. Part of your identity is your handsome locks that you have that we're looking at oh, if we release the friend. video. Yeah. So if Cold Nation demands we release the um, release the, the, the Coors Cut, hashtag release the Coors Cut video yeah let's see if i can get well, this so you'll then people will see your beautiful hair and my big fat head and what is going to happen if you can't go get your hair cut which you cannot do mm -hmm. for the next couple of months what what are we all are we all going to look what are we going to look like it's a decent question and um yeah because barbers and salons are one of the ones that is not considered essential um it <laughs> night joe's entering his second can territory um i think i'll be fine i can grow in my hair it's cut pretty short or like going mm. into it so i think i'll be fine even if it's a month or something i do own a haircut clipper that i could use oh. if you want to shave joe i come on over i can't uh, we have to I'll do it digitally six foot yeah um, no, it's a decent question. I've been considering trying to grow out facial hair during this time because like, if I don't have to face clients or anything, it's not that big of a deal if I look like absolute shit. What'd you do with your facial hair? I do. I really do. Um, but if not you now, not, you're a beautiful man. What are you thinking about all this? You worried about getting your hair cut? I'm not worried about getting my hair cut, but it may, like, I was thinking about like the incessant, um, like if you follow the news, the incessant stream of negativity surrounding this, and that's for good reason. There is on the surface, it's all negative. It's unfortunately people are losing their lives. The economy is going to make people lose, has already made people lose their job and millions of people are going to lose their jobs. There's a lot of negative, awful stuff that I'm not trying to gloss over because it's, but, but we're all acutely aware of all of that negative, awful stuff. So then I was thinking about what is like the second tier, second tier of uh of uh of like impact like what are the unintended consequences of all of this and i don't think we're going to understand that until it's all over or until we've all done it for this isolation for months on end you know one of like which is like yeah an easy one is how do we get a haircut that kind of stuff um is do you think there are any positive outcomes from this like I'm trying to think like instead of just talking doom and gloom, what positive things will will happen, which I'm not saying is going to offset all of the awful stuff that's happening, but will it will at least be some ray of sun in this. Like I could I would imagine hope hopefully pollution is going down. Yeah. Cool to see how quickly that turned, right? Right. That is nice. Like traffic goes down, pollution goes down. That's pretty obvious. And factories start shuttering, um, which again has the surface uh, uh, unfortunate impact of people losing their jobs, but uh, one positive thing is pollution is going down. Are there any others that you've thought about? Like this isolation is going to give us something, something good out of all of this. Mm -hmm. I think it shows the importance of people who work in the service industry and the medical industry, um, which has not always been recognized whether in compensation or in like attitude towards. Yeah. Um, so I hope that changes. And like, for instance, the fact that grocery store workers have had to be like front lines warriors in this entire thing, not getting time off of work is insane. And they're, you know, getting paid minimum wage. So hopefully things like that can change. Right. Um, in terms of larger work stuff, I think this will certainly lead to more things happening in a work from home 
setting. Yeah. Um, which will cut down somewhat on people getting stressed about commutes and, you know, balancing a family and work and stuff like that. Um, I think those are two positives. Yeah. I think there are probably more. Did you have any in, particularly in mind? No, I, I'm too, I am all cooped up. I, I find like, I can't fucking think straight. So I, I don't know. I think that it does shift our perspective. I think that's what you're getting at. And that's something I've thought about, like what's important, the, who is important, uh, when I think times it's are showing some, yeah, it's making it very obvious what actually yeah. matters. Yeah. Um, and so much of what we thought was important is bullshit. And <laughs> so like the relationships, when you take, when you lose anything, that's when you realize how much it, it meant to your, your life. If you, if you go through a breakup or somebody passes away or something, and this is this weird social experiment that we're happening, that's happening right now where we're all losing a lot. Uh, again, some some people more than others. I some people are fortunate enough to at least the the most that they're losing is just sitting there with social isolation, um, which I do think is going to reshape people's perspectives, and that's hopefully in, in the long run. Uh, or, or our attention spans are so shot that we'll fucking forget about. Like, I, I, I would add to that. I think the human human condition for being flexible to our environments also means that we will probably forget, you know, the larger lessons from this time pretty easily. But I think, I hope the changes come in the form of legislation and, um, I mean, we don't have to go down a political road, but will affect how people, what they value in a potential candidate or who our leaders are, um, Hopefully it has that larger impact. I don't know if it will have an entire impact on the individual basis for like an entire life or something like that, you know? Right. Yeah, I I, I can see a world where uh, in like if this, let's say this, this all kind of starts to trend positively enough that we go back to business as usual, I don't know, in June or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I can see a world where it's like as soon as like July where we all have kind of forgot that this happened oh, <laughs> like, yeah. like in a in in a in a collective sense because again there are some individuals that are getting particularly hurt by this both from a health and like an economic perspective but um but collectively if we all forget about this in july yeah there's it's still an election year like in november when november rolls around are we all just going to forget that this happened and how poorly it was handled i don't know um and that's really disheartening if that ends up being the case, because at least we should learn lessons from this. Speaking right. of uh, lessons learned, how is Coors Light uh, when, you know, we, we did we learn our lesson the first time we ranked it? Mm, great tie in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it is a good tie in. Good time to check in. Um, OK, I mean, yeah, I cracked my second beer. We were probably, what, 15 minutes into the program when I cracked my second one. And uh, it's just ultra, ultra drinkable. Makes everything go down smooth. I feel better now than I did at the start of our recording when I hadn't had any course light. So it's, tell me what that means. <laughs> it's the it's vanilla ice cream of beers is what popped into my head. Um, which is if you listen to the better podcast that we have, which is Doughboys, uh, one of their arguments, I think Nick Weiger's argument is vanilla is a flavor is his big his big stance it's not just the default it's its own flavor Uh, of course it is right well i actually kind of tend to disagree with that vanilla is generally a base it does stand alone but it is also the base that we build everything on top of like it's so much broth is a flavor but it's also a base that you build more complex things on i don't think that's chocolate ice cream isn't a vanilla base like uh, like, That's a good point. I'm not uh, talking about that though. I'm talking about vanilla being a base. For, chocolate is a different thing. Vanilla is the base for every. There, there are a lot of creations that are vanilla based. So talking about like a sundae or something, ice cream sundae with vanilla exactly ice cream, right. and like a M and M McFlurry or something. Just because it is highly adaptable to different flavors doesn't negate its own prowess as a flavor and i think people who just view vanilla as like you know the bland thing or whatever that's from a time when vanilla 
like you just had this sort of an artificial vanilla flavor, like the vanillin or whatever that um, sure. thing is called. Now, when you have the like artisan blends that have actual vanilla bean or stuff in it, it is actually nice. Joey's giving me the jerk off the uh, sign. Well, I think, vanilla I think if you have actual vanilla, it is worthy of recognition and um, celebration. Sure. Fine. All of that's fine. It doesn't, it's also, it's a, it's a flavor of fine. Let's agree that it can stand on its own. It also works really well when built upon, built on top of, of, with other things. I can phrase that right. It works well with the base. What way is Coors Light like that? Coors Light is the essence of a beer taste, meaning it doesn't have a robust flavor. It doesn't have uh, anything, any interesting direction that a craft beer takes, whether that's going for like a super hoppy uh, uh, flavor, going with something that's adding, <laughs> adding it. Nick has also given me the motion I gave him earlier. Uh, or there's adding, adding in additives to to beer. It's it's a very baseline. <laughs> Do with additives, but add them in. <laughs> it's a baseline flavor of beer, which I like and thinks it much like vanilla stands alone on its own. I just I like when people do more with beer and, and not every light beer, in my opinion, fits that criteria. I don't think Miller light fits that. I, I just think this is like what I like about beer. It stands alone on its own. And there are certainly things that are better that you can drink than this, but this is, this, this works at its own level. So in in a way I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. What do you think about this, Joe? Say your buddy asks you if you want a beer um, mm-hmm. and then you're in a spot where you really do want that beer and you know exactly what you want and you say, of course I do. It's fine. Fair enough. I you, agree. Why this- would you, what are you saying when you say that? Are you asking for a Coors? Yes. Of Coors I do. Yes. Don't over explain this genius joke to the people. They're smart. I they get- th- no, I think they're going to need, unless they're as uh, have as much brain trauma as you, they'll need the explanation to understand what you were trying to do. Can I get to the segment I had brought? I went all the way downstairs. He has a secret segment that he wouldn't tell me about. We supported our local boards. We went to all of our local places. Okay. Uh, I told you we went to Ballard and we picked up a bunch of uh, People um, not in the know. Ballard's kind of a a distant neighborhood in Seattle. That from where Joey and I live, anyway, is a relative. You know, it's not easy to get to. Sure, um, uh, kind people, of a popular place for people to both buy homes at this point, and there are a lot of breweries in this area. I think our very own Zach Jabal lives in that area. Oh, really? I believe um, so. Not that okay. that should be public knowledge. <laughs> yeah, what's his address <laughs> exactly to the to the uh, number? Uh, damn it! I hope I don't have to edit that out. Go ahead, Joe. What are, are, is our rabid fan base going to scour the streets of Ballard, burning down houses until they find the Jabal clan so they can get their hands on those pretzel plates? <laughs> <laughs> they um, what if they were smart? <laughs> All right, hold uh, your statement. I went and supported by local breweries. Wow, you're a um, warrior. I am um, something of a responsible Seattle citizen and purchased what is, uh, whether it's the circumstance I'm in, whether I'm losing my mind, Mm. I've started to answer questions that are like, what's your favorite blah? So what's your favorite beer is what I get asked when people know I do this podcast. And it's hard to give like a all time favorite because I've, I've, that's been my MO for a long time. So I'm trying to evolve out of that to at least just give like, what is, what jumps to mind? What's my last, like my current favorite thing, like my current favorite restaurant in Seattle um, before it all closed down is reckless noodles. uh, And my current favorite beer is Mm. Ruben's crush mosaic. Ladies and gentlemen. So this is, you gotta get a pick of that can. That's a beautiful can. It's a beautiful can. This is the type of pattern we want to put in our studio rug. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get a Rubens Brews sponsorship. Let's do it. So I wanted to share with you the experience of drinking this. 
Um, and I wondered if you had any beers in your fridge. What? Your segment is you drinking a beer by yourself. No, the segment is if do you have any beers you want to share as as uh... oh okay. <laughs> now, that you're, now that you're stealing my take on the favorite movie question from last week about I don't have an all time favorite movie. I have a current that, favorite movie. No, 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 that, no, no, no. that was not your take. Now that you're that was stealing not your take. Um, what is my favorite current beer? Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm asking. The segment is not that. The segment, the segment is. The segment is. Do you have a beer in your fridge that you want to? Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Prop up and talk about. You know, it's it's it's, uh, it's qualities. Uh, it may seem like a the fix is in, but. I got to say Deschutes by Deschutes Brewery, the number one beer on the cold cans list is still my favorite beer to just have on hand yeah. and uh, drink, especially as we get into the warmer months of the year here. They yeah. actually updated their graphic design on their packaging. I don't think the cans are different, but the pack packaging is new. Wow. So I think it's becoming an everyday beer for them, which is fun to see because it wasn't good. always that. You think it got the cold cans bump? I think it did, yeah. Sales are off the charts for Deschutes. Well, that's good. Uh, Great segment. Deschutes, Deschutes, I don't know. So, Ruben's crush. Or the moon. If you, even if you miss, you'll still land among the stars. <laughs> that's pretty good. You got me at the end. Uh, but if you are one of our listeners in Seattle, if for everyone, uh, I encourage you. Rubens is still open, um, mm. and it's doing takeout, so you could be a responsible citizen. And uh, if you're bored, which you probably are, uh, anytime drive by there, you can stop in and get this for takeout. It's they actually have, they have like a they built it. You don't have to go in their brewery. They built something out right by the sidewalk, so you just walk oh. in off the sidewalk. Yeah, and they have like they have the sanitized pay station. They encourage like Apple Pay, so you you straight up like. The, the guy will grab you one of these. They're wearing gloves and everything. It's very, it's, it's, they've thought it out. Like, it's not like they're just staying open for business and it's just normal takeout. They've, they've built this out for this experience. The neighborhood that that's in is struggling right now. Um, we talked with a couple of people at the front desk during the takeouts and they were really happy that, you know, people are still out, you know, stocking up like this. And so if you're in Seattle, uh, my current favorite beer is still available. You can go get it anytime. It's Rubens Crush Mosaic. It is. Uh, it's not overly hoppy and bitter. It's like it's the good kind of hoppy, the fruity kind that that like it's has a natural. It's it is a hazy, yeah, a hazy IPA. But it's not also like some hazies are too much. It's like if you pour it out and you look at it, it looks like pulpy orange juice. This doesn't have that texture either, so it's a good balance. Yeah, um, it's if you're in Seattle, check it out. That's my segment. Your your uh your Re Ruben's muse yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> my segment was basically can we I wanted to support uh the local breweries in our area that uh hey that I'm all right now. I think that's cool um yeah I've been to optimism a few times that's the one in my neighborhood that I like the most um yeah it's tough I because you know, I'm trying to balance supporting all these local businesses while also keeping in mind that I don't have a ton of um, job security at the moment. So I yeah. think that's thing yeah. a lot of people have to grapple with is, you know, it's not our responsibility to keep businesses open. Of course, it's the um, our politicians and government at the end of the day, like, of course, our support is big in the long run, but you know, individual purchases aren't going to save companies. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. It's it's if you are fortunate enough to have the means and are otherwise going to buy beer, and maybe you every every time you buy beer, you go to your grocery store and you buy Blue Moon. Um, just think about at, in this time making the extra little drive over and, and buying something that's that's creating the culture of the city that you might live in. And that probably applies whether you're back home in Wisconsin as well. We have a lot of listeners in Milwaukee. I was talking with my friend, Andrew. Um, I was kind Drew of thinking about doing the same things, Drew Crumb. So yeah, that's my segment. Support. It's a great segment. Support Thank you. Local. That's it. That was my segment.
now and and always. I mean, fuck them in the future, but now, now you got it because they're they're in your life. They bring them prices down. <laughs> um, no, that's great. Should we try to give this new opportunity? Let's give it a new opportunity. Okay. So, so how does this going to go? Yeah, I believe the premise is where should it move in the rankings? It can move within different tiers. And in theory, it will bump whatever beer is at the bottom of its tier down into the next tier. It will not remove it from the list. Or we could expand that tier. This could be one where we expand the tier. Let's live brainstorm this, Joe. Our listeners love it. I was just going to say it's their favorite part of this is us uh, figuring this out on the fly. I I can maybe simplify it and say that I don't think I would take this out of the tier it's in, which is the deplorables. Hmm. Let me uh, let me do a Google search here, see where that is. Well, I found my listing at https secure colon slash slash coldcanspodcast.com slash rankings. Now, if you're using Microsoft Edge, you'll be able to uh, to reach that location on your Edge browser. Mm. So you don't have it getting out of deplorables, which would only move it up seven spots, essentially, or eight spots. I do have a spot for it, but it is in deplorables. Yes, I think it's strange and maybe getting away from our roots that we are so... Um, speak so highly of this beer and then it gets trapped in the seventies range. I would rather have a Coors Light than a lot of beers. Wow. At above it. You're right. I was narrow minded. Cause now I've scrolled up on coldcanspodcast.com slash rankings. <laughs> and know, for those I love this infinite scroll on our rankings page. It's nice. <laughs> we have a scroll feature that we added. Uh, so you have the ability to scroll. Now, if your mouse has a little um, little wheel, you can use that. Ooh, Joe's going actual mouse. So it took our intern a long time to build that, so please use it. Do you, Nick, do you click the little up and down arrows on the right and hold them and watch the scroll bar go? Is that how you scroll? I actually have a Lenovo ThinkPad with the little red uh, the in the middle. No, it's the middle. I'm trying to keep it PG, but okay. Uh, I guess nipple is kind of PG compared to what yeah. you could about it. Uh, Tell I me the rated R version of what you're looking to uh, scroll only. All right. Where should this go? What is your rated R version of the no. nipple? Say no. it. Say I it in a video. Podcast. Uh, okay. Where do you – I think I have this in – I'm scrolling. It's taken me a while because I'm holding the up arrow on the scroll bar. How is Bush Heavy number 49 on our list? Coors Heavy's 50. Hmm. What have we done? Yeah, this is better than Coors Heavy. I'll tell you why. If I click on Coors Heavy, it was released in 2019. That's yeah. what we've done. Great take. Coors Heavy, the description was, Nick and Joey discussed the etymology of the word banquet. Joey makes Nick take a nip. Then the boys play around of you don't hear that anymore. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. You you gave me a fireball shot because you had just drank it while skiing, and then your grandma gave you the Wisconsin magazine that has the segment of you don't hear that anymore. That's right, man. We should play more of you don't hear that anymore. <laughs> That's a good segment. More magazines. All right, I got a spot, and it's in. Oh, man, Natty Light is twenty seven. Uh oh wow you oh wow my score are it's gonna take ten minutes to hold the up arrow and get to there. I'm in wild. I'm in wild. I can get to wild. Okay. But now give me a second here. So wild starts our wild card tier starts at number twenty eight, which is oh, family mind, vacation beer. Am I reading them off? Should just I? For, just for me, yeah. For old times' sake? Uh Taint to tip or tip to taint? Dealer's choice. <laughs> I always start at the taint. Uh, at the taint, so <laughs> it starts at number forty-four, goes up to twenty-eight. Mm-hmm. That is, what did you say? Keep going. No, you can't mumble here over video conferencing. Tell me what you said. What is he doing right now? Nick's waving out the window at someone. I know who lives out that window. It's a 
it's a nursing home. Oh, how are they doing? Are they quarantined? Oh, I'm, they must be. Yeah, that's 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 frightening. I don't. Uh, never mind. I was. I don't know how different it is from you know most days. I guess their family sure. probably can visit them, which is that is a big change. That's true. So I take. Hopefully, that. hopefully they have like enough i know a lot of nursing homes have like video conferencing stuff that they're putting in now that they didn't yeah. otherwise have to give them ipads and stuff so i bet they do yeah technology can help there all right 44 up to 28 this is the wild card tier that we are about to give a new opportunity towards so 44 is crikey ipa alaskan amber from Great joey's Lakes. very own rubens bruce crikey ipa from rubens bruce not nearly as good as rubens crushed mosaic um Yes, Rubens Brews, Crikey IPA, 44. 43 is Alaskan Amber, 42, Great Lakes Christmas Ale. Then Night Swim Porter, Bud Light Platinum, Line and Google Summer Shandy, Dos Equis, Sam Adams Oktoberfest, Stella Artois, Sam Adams Boston Lager. Two Sam Adams within three oh. spots. Fremont Parkland Pills, Overcast Espresso Stout, Newcastle Brown Ale, Shiner Bach, Line and Kugel's Original, Rainier, and both of those were re-ranked in the great uh, Power Hour re-ranking um, mm. of 2018. And then number 28, the top of our wild card list is um, Family Vacation Beer. Please don't fail to mention that Night Swim Porter was a alternative that entered the... That's true. What did it displace? Night Swim Porter. We have to go scroll all the way down to Satan's walk-in cooler in hell. <laughs> Ugly oh, pug. Ugly pug. Okay. Deservedly so. Okay. So, oh God, my scroll bar broke. It did. It froze up. I mean, okay, here we go. Oh man, we have not been formatting our Satan's walk in cooler in hell consistently. <laughs> I've been adding them to the top of the list and you added. But oh, no. Okay. You gotta add to the bottom. No. Most recent at the top. That's yeah, how our right. was load. That's how the rankings are listed. Okay, Thank you, Joe. <laughs> All I, right, I, got I told you I started the taint. I got a spot. Uh, I show you a spot. All right. I. Oh man, this is a tough one. Okay, I got a spot. Three, two, one. Yes. Three, two, two one. 30. 30. No way. We did it. And we did it. it. It seems natural, like, because it's not Rainier. It can't. Rainier has, like, this boundary. A certain panache to it that just simply cannot be touched. Wow. Seeing the video, again, hopefully we release the video, uh, helps improve that. Uh, and there's a membrane there. Yeah, you can't get through that Rainier membrane. <clears throat> uh, 30 is perfect. Great. <laughs> so 30 30 puts yeah. it below Rainier and above Lining Kugel's original, which I yep. think is, that fits. It does. That is a 47 no yeah, wow. 47 uh, spot jump in the rankings. Wow. Who, who has to update the website? <laughs> I think it's your week, right? Damn it. It's probably my week. I think cuz I right. to edit last week's episode. But I did upload it. That is true. But so, that is more so than I expect. What are we going to do? Crikey IPA, is it going to go down into mild cards or is wild cards going to expand? I've told you about my fluid tier system. Ah, yes. How the else fluid, can fluid, fluid tiers? How else are we going to be able to grow the middle class? If the one percent must stay at the one percent, we must grow the middle class. So okay. I, so Opportunities I, can expand tiers. A new opportunity okay. to grow the middle class, to grow the wild card tier, means Crikey stays oh, in. Oh, with your beer dollars, folks. Goddamn right. What are you trying to say? All right. Well, this was fun, Joey. I I am sad that we have to do them this way, but I think all all in, it's it's not too bad. Drinking beers with a bud. It could be worse. Uh, if anybody's out there watching or listening. Um, Hopefully you're, you're able to, and you should call a bud and do what we just did for 50 minutes and 45 seconds um, and, and hang out and have a beer with them because uh, it's the perfect time to do it.